One of the coolest new kinds of Pokemon premiered in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with what the community has dubbed Convergent Pokemon. But there were only four of them, so what if we made more Convergent Pokemon? Hey everyone, Brandon here. Wiglet, Wugtrio, Toad School, and Toad Scroll are some of the coolest while simultaneously most hilarious additions to the Pokemon roster. Many in the Fakemon community have speculated at what other convergent Pokemon might look like, so I figured today I would throw my hat in the ring while addressing some of the design patterns convergent Pokemon follow that I've noticed some may have missed. The naming scheme, kinds of Pokemon chosen, and typing of these mods all have a pattern to them, and I know only four examples aren't a lot to go off of, but I still believe there's some commonalities between this group. At the end of the day, Fakemon is totally open in concept and these are just my observations and opinions, so if you resonate with them, great! And if you don't agree, that's fine too. Just please be polite about it when discussing it in the comments below. But before I dive too deep into it, let's talk about today's video sponsor. If you were like me, you didn't spend Valentine's Day with a special someone. Well, Raid Shadow Legends has you covered with their Valentine's Day event going on until March 14th. With the chance to win real prizes such as in-game champions or Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. If you use code SAINTVALENTINE23, you can treat yourself to a nice little gift of in-game items. For those who somehow have no idea what Raid is, Raid Shadow Legends is a mobile RPG that has over 80 million players around the world. It's free to play and can be enjoyed casually or competitively, and there are challenges for both PvP and PvE players, so there's something for everyone. Personally, as someone who loves to talk about creature design, Raid's nearly 700 unique and epic champion designs definitely piqued my interest, especially the designs of the new faction, the Sylvan Watchers. I'm a sucker for a good nature-themed witch or knight, so this group definitely has some of my favorite champions. Oella has my heart, and Green Warden Ruark is so epic! He has a tree woman in his shield! So make sure to use my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to get yourself a free starter pack with some cool in-game loot. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it. To start, I'm going to use some examples of convergent Pokemon I made, all to talk about the patterns I've noticed. So let's get started with Wubuzz, a Bung Electric type convergent version of Wubat that I commissioned Kaifake Mon SR for. Of course, with Buzz being so prominently featured in its name, this little guy is based around fuzzy little bumblebees. Wubat's fuzzball nature and minimal design made an easy swap for design characteristics. Swap out the bug wings for bat wings, add a little stinger, and bada boom, Wubuzz. This mod brings up one of the patterns many have noticed. The four existing convergent Pokemon Pokemon's types have some sort of effectiveness against the original Pokemon they are based on. For example, the Toad School line being Grass Ground cancels out the Tentacle line's Water Poison. I do think it can be a bit more flexible than just having the Convergent Pokemon be super effective against the original, so some of the Pokemon throughout this video are actually weak to their counterparts. It also seems that they have the same amount of types as their counterparts. So if the original was single-typed, the Convergent will be too, and vice versa for dual types. Anyway, let's evolve Wubuzz into Swubuzz. Swubuzz is based on Hornets, but more specifically the Oriental Hornet, a Vespid found all throughout the middle of the Eastern Hemisphere. It has the unique ability to absorb sunlight through this little stripe on its thorax and can generate a small amount of electric potential, hence its bug electric typing. Swubuzz's thorax is more expanded like the tail of Swubat, and is meant to reflect a bug zapper, given the Oriental Hornet's yellow electrical stripe on its thorax. Swubuzz is literally a zappy bug that is also a bug zapper. The yellow fuzziness of this line also mirrors the bug electric types found in Wubat's generation, Joltik and Galvantula. Onto the next line and yet another pattern. For this, we have Clocknia, a pure ice type convergent Pokemon based on Cacnea, also made by Kai. To be perfectly honest here, the name for this definitely came to me before the concept, but I'm still really proud of the concept here. Clocknia is based on analog alarm clocks and ice sculptures. You can see that the little pattern that made up Cacnea's mouth has been slightly adjusted to make Clocknia's eyes look like the hands of a clock. Clocknia evolves into Clockturn, an ice psychic type based on grandfather clocks, and with its melting appearance is also based on the incredibly famous painting by Salvador Dali, The Persistence of Memory. This inspiration makes me feel like these two could definitely fit in the Paldea region. I'm especially proud of Clockturn's name. While sure it's just Clock plus Cacturn, it also references the turning of the clock or turning back the clocks, as in Daylight Savings Time or when people refer to something from a time long past. While we're on the topic of names, this brings me to another pattern with Convergent Pokemon I've noticed many not picking up on, that being how the names actually work. You'll notice that in the four Convergent Pokemon that exist and the ones I've already shown off, one part of their name stays consistent throughout the line. The W between Wiglet and Wugtrio, the Toads, the Buzzes, and the Clocks all stay the same. But what I've seen many doing is switching what changes upon evolution. 
An example of what I've seen would be like if Clocknia evolved into Cacti or something like that. This is just one little pattern that kind of irks me each time I see it missed because it's definitely there and consistent between the two existing convergent lines. With that, let's move on to another convergent line, this time showing off both patterns I've referenced throughout the video and discussing another one that ties into the last pattern I spoke of. So next up is Nosepack a pure flying type based on Nosepass, who I commissioned Trevenart for. As I said before, this Convergimon is actually weak to its counterpart. I really wanted to do a Convergent Pokemon for Nosepass because it's just such a fun design, so my first thought was to turn that big old schnoz into a big old beak. The peck part of its name and its overall design is obviously based on woodpeckers, specifically the Imperial Woodpecker but it also takes from Picky Peck's patterning. So you could even go as far as to say that maybe Picky Peck and Nose Peck have some kind of common ancestor. Nose Peck evolves into Probo Peck, a flying grass type. The metallic mustache of Probopass has been replaced in favor of a nest for Probopack to help raise its eggs in. Speaking of, the little eggs slash baby birds replace the mini noses. Probopass and the mini noses are meant to reference a compass rose, and Probopack sort of carries on this tradition. Being a bird that has baby birds facing different directions references weather vanes, which typically have some kind of chicken or form of bird on them. Lastly, these wood elements come together to make Probopec look like it is hiding within a tree, which birds are known to make their nests within. But also, it is a pun on the name Woodpecker, being a woodpecker made of wood. So, on to my final little pattern of the video before we talk about some other convergent Pokemon. And maybe you've already noticed it. So far, I have only used Pokemon where the names share some kind of commonality, and the part they share is in the same placement of the name. While I don't think this is a hard and fast pattern as it limits what you can do, I do think there should be at least one part shared between their names. Like Cottony and Whimsicott, or Swinub and Pyloswine. Which kind of brings me to my previous point, you would change the cot or swine of those lines names instead of changing halfway through as I've seen others doing. I would like to reiterate that fake mon is free and this is not me telling you what to do. You can do whatever you want with your fake mon. I just thought that pointing out these patterns may help someone when they're creating their own convergent Pokemon. Anyway, that's the last of my little pattern talk, so let's move on to another fun convergent line with Fomalos and Loralos. These two are pure bug types that are based on Fomantis and Lorantis that were also done by Trevenart. So you know how this line is kind of supposed to be the opposite of the Orchid Mantis? Rather than being a bug looking like a plant, it's a plant looking like a bug. Well, Fomalos and Loralos follow in the footsteps of that a bit. Fomantis and Lorantis are using a form of defensive camouflage, trying to look like something they're not to avoid being targeted. Which, when you think about it, doesn't really make sense because bug and grass share two weaknesses. Anyway, Fomalos and Loralos are using offensive camouflage, specifically that of mimicry. They are attempting to look like harmless little sheep Pokemon, all fluffy and cute, until they attack, revealing their true arachnoid form and demolishing their prey. This is actually the kind of behavior that Orchid Mantises exhibit, so it's kind of a call back to that, but it is also based on the phrase a wolf in sheep's clothing. But instead, Fomalos and Loralos are a wolf spider in sheep's clothing. If you couldn't tell, I'm very proud of this concept and pun. Fomalos and Loralos' name comes from the Golden Ram Chrysomalos, which is the sheep that the famous Golden Fleece is taken from. Loralos' bipedality refers to Pan, the Greek god of the wild and shepherds, who also has the horns and legs of a goat, and the fawns and satyrs, who also share those traits. The fluffiness of this line not only comes from the sheep, but also comes from the woolly aphid, which kind of gives us a cyclical inspiration thing going on here. So there's lots of convergent bugs in this video, so how about we reverse that? Let's take Lediba and Ledian and give them the convergent counterparts of Upsetiba and Upsetian, who I commissioned Malmistex for. They are both rock fighting type, taking the air-based Ladybug and turning it into a ground-based rock monster that just so happens to look like a bug, which leads into Upsetiba and Upsetian's design basis. They pull from the same inspiration as Lowkicks, being common Rider, except these two reference some of the more modern writers who have more of a beetle motif, like Kuga or Gatak. The belt or Arkel that Kuga uses is actually initially made of stone, and the crystal or Amadam within it changes Kuga's appearance throughout the show, further playing into this line's rock typing. Malmus and I thought a fun way to make the design look less bug-like and reference the Arkel would be to turn Lediba and Ledian's middle set of arms into the belt that many common writers use to transform. The evolution from Upsetiba to Upsetian also references the many powered-up forms of the riders. I really wanted to put more of a focus on the armored aspects of the riders, as Lowkicks already handles the famous rider kick, and with their rock typing, defense made more sense as a focal point. Its relationship with low kicks would be like that of the riders who are an enemy at first, but then become good and join forces with the main rider of the season. Their name and coloration take from the very well-known igneous rock, Obsidian. Also, this totally isn't the second time I've used Lediba and Ledian to make a Tokusatsu reference. Totally not because I'm a huge Toku fan. Yep, totally. 
And those are some of my ideas for Convergent Pokemon. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.